The company of this essay is Hotspot Systems, and this is a capital budgeting question, and since it's capital budgeting, that puts it in part two, section E. So let's go ahead and read about Hotspot Systems. Hotspot Systems is considering a proposal to develop a new line of electronic games based on books and movies targeting the teenage market. The Ocean Port Office Complex, one of the company's five facilities, has been idle for the past 15 months. The project, which is expected to last seven years, would utilize the entire capacity of the Ocean Front Office. Hotspot Systems uses the internal rate of return method for evaluating capital expenditure proposals. The established hurdle rate is 11%, and the company's marginal income tax rate is 30%. So 11% internal rate of return, 30% tax rate. Hotspot's management team is reviewing the following items to determine whether they should be included in the project's annual cash flows to be used in calculating the internal rate of return. So these are the different items. If the project is not approved, Hotspot will sell the Ocean Port Office Complex for $2 million. Hotspot currently carries the Ocean Port Office Complex at a book value of $1,500,000. Hotspot expects to pay licensing costs to the owners of the books and movies. Research and development totaling $350,000 has already been expended on the design of the new games. Additional computer equipment incorporating the latest technology will be purchased for $125,000 and installed for the project. For tax purposes, the life of the equipment would be five years and Hotspot uses straight line depreciation for tax purposes. A one-time increase in working capital of $75,000 is required to begin the project. A major introductory advertising program to promote the new games is planned to begin immediately upon project approval. And at the end of the project's life, the Ocean Port Office Complex will be sold in excess of the value recorded for financial reporting purposes. So that's all of the information that we are given. And we have a number of requirements, actually more than usual, so we start with first, calculate the net cash flow impact if Hotspot sells the Ocean Port Office Complex and show your calculations. What's the cash flow just if we sell it? Second, explain how the potential net cash flow from the sale of Ocean, Shore, Ocean Port should be considered in the decision to pursue the project. Third, identify and explain one advantage and one disadvantage of a licensing agreement based on a percentage of game sales as compared to a licensing agreement based on a flat fee. Fourth, we've got a number here for the following items which are being reviewed by Hotspots Management. Indicate how the item would be included in the project's cash flow and the year in which the cash flows will be affected. So there's five, research and development, additional computer equipment, working capital increase, introductory advertising program, and the sale of the Ocean Port Office at the end of the project. The fifth requirement, explain how IRR is determined and what IRR measures. Six, explain how IRR is used in project appraisal and approval. And finally, compare and contrast IRR to the net present value method of evaluating capital expenditure. And so those are the seven requirements, but requirement number four had five items to it, but none of them are terribly long. So we'll go ahead back up to requirement number one. Calculate the net cash flow impact if Hotspot sells the Ocean Port Office complex. And so what we have here is in green, this is simply the information from the problem, from the information from the question that is relevant. So we don't have to go back and look at that. So the information was if the project is not approved, Hotspot will sell the Ocean Port Office complex for $2 million. Hotspot currently carries the Ocean Port Office complex at a book value of $1.5 and the company's marginal income tax rate is 30%. So if we were to sell this, we would sell it for $2 million. It currently has a book value of $1.5 million, which means there would be a gain. And if we have a gain, we're gonna have the pleasure and privilege of paying 30% of that gain as a tax. And so we kind of can write this up. $2 million received in cash for the, from the sale, less taxes payable on the gain. That's the cash flow impact. The gain is $500,000 and the tax rate is 30%. So $150,000 must be paid in taxes. The, here's our work, $500,000 times 30%. So the net cash inflow is $1,850,000. If we sell it at the beginning, 
we will end up with $1,850,000 more cash than we had before we sold that property. So the key here is, is to get that gain and to pay the taxes on the gain as a reduction of the cash received from the sale of that property. So continuing the second requirement, explain how the potential net cash flow from the sale of Oceanport should be considered in the decision to pursue the project. Well, that 1.85 million is an opportunity cost, for example, meaning it will be lost or pushed later if the company decides to use Oceanport to make the games. Thus, the 1.5 million should be included as a zero period cost. Really what's happening here is this is what we would have to pay in order to have the facility for this project. Now, it's not a cash outflow because we don't have to buy it, but it's that opportunity cost. We could sell this property instead. And if we did sell this property, we would get $1.85 million for it. Since we're not selling it and we're using it in this project, that $1.85 million is the investment into this project. And so that's that zero period cost. This is that initial investment, but it's presented here as an opportunity cost instead of a cash payment. This is what it is that we're giving up in order to have this project. Now the third requirement, identify or explain one advantage and one disadvantage of a licensing agreement based on a percentage of game sales as compared to a licensing agreement based on a flat fee. Okay. Now, this is kind of a difficult one to answer in exactly that way. We said the advantage of a licensing agreement based on a percentage of sales is that if sales are low, the company will owe less in licensing fees. Okay, if we don't sell anything, we don't owe anything. But the disadvantage of a licensing agreement based on a percentage of sales is that if sales are high, the company will owe more in licensing fees because they will owe the fee on all of those high levels of sales. Now, there is a break-even point where the percentage of sales and that flat fee will be equal. Okay? So at a low level of sales, we're better off having the percentage of sales method. At a high level of sales, we're better off with that flat fee once we've passed that break-even point. Now the fourth question, this is where we need to look at each of these individual items and determine how it's going to go into the project's cash flow in the year. And so we'll look at each of these individually. And again, I've pulled out that information from the question that we have here. It's presented in green, so we just have the information. Research and development. So the issue is research and development totaling $350,000 has already been expended on the design of the new games. Well, the key word in this is already. It's already been expended. These are sunk costs which have already been incurred and will not change whether the project is accepted or rejected. Since these costs are not relevant to the decision, they should not be included in the cash flow analysis for the project. It's already spent. Whether we do it, don't do it, that's already spent. We're not going to get that back. And so this is not a relevant cash flow to this project. 4B, the additional computer equipment, the information, additional computer equipment incorporating the latest technology will be purchased for $125,000 and installed for the project. For tax purposes, the life of the equipment would be five years and Hotspot uses straight line depreciation for tax purposes. Well, this is a cash flow for the project. The purchase price of the computers and the cost of install installation represent an investment of capital and should be included as a cash outflow at time zero. Okay. But we need to keep going. The computers are to be depreciated over five years, so the tax savings will result in a cash inflow during years one through five. Okay, that's that tax depreciation shield. We need to include that as well. And then also, if the equipment has any value at the end of the project and is sold, this may result in a cash inflow in year seven. So we've got one purchase of $125,000 that may generate three cash flows. We know it'll generate the purchase. It's possible that it'll generate, or it will generate that tax depreciation, and it's possible then that it will create a third cash flow if it's sold at the end of the project. Okay, so that's the additional computer equipment. Moving on, the working capital increase. A one-time increase in working capital of $75,000 is required to begin the project. Well, we know that 
And the increase in working capital is a cash outflow. So the one-time increase in working capital would be treated as a cash outflow at the beginning of the project. But we need to remember that at the end of the project, that working capital should become available again. And so the release of the working capital would be treated as a cash inflow in year seven at the end of the project. So you need to make certain when you're answering this that you're not just stuck on the cash outflow or the working capital increase, but what happens after that initial that initial cash flow in our calculation. So the next one is the introductory and advertising program. From the question, a major introductory advertising program to promote the new games is planned to begin immediately upon project approval. Well, this is a one-time operating expense, which would be a tax deductible and would therefore be included as a net cash outflow. Because it appears that the advertising would take place before the product is ready for sale, the net advertising expense should be factored into the cash flows at the beginning of the project. And that's the key word, introductory. Okay, going to begin immediately upon the project approval, which means the cash is most likely going to be paid right there immediately upon the proposal being approved and the project being started. Okay, so again, we need to... One-time operating expense would be tax deductible, so the net cash outflow in year zero. So our last individual component here in requirement four, the sale of the oceanfront office, ocean port office at the end of the project. Well, at the end of the project's life, the ocean port office complex will be sold in excess of the value recorded for financial reporting purposes. Well, the net proceeds from the sale of the office building would be a cash inflow at the end of the project. These Proceeds would be adjusted for any taxes paid resulting from a tax gain on the sale. And that gain is calculated by comparing the sale price to the tax basis of the property, which is also here the same financial reporting purposes. We're not told that there's anything different with that. Um, but we're looking here at that sale and the tax impact. We're told that it will be sold in excess of the value recorded. So that's what tells us it's going to be a gain. It's going to be recorded at 500,000 and we're going to sell it at 800,000. I don't know, but just we're going to sell it at a gain. So we went through each of those five cash flows, which were the, the bullet points in the question information. And so we still have a couple of requirements, three requirements that we need to go through. Requirement number five, explain how IRR is determined and what IRR measures. You can just kind of nice definition here. The internal rate of return is the discount rate at which the present value of the cash inflows equals the present value of the cash outflows. The IRR is determined by developing the annual cash flows for a project and determining the interest rate which, when applied to the cash flows, would result in a zero net present value. Okay. The internal rate of return is the discount rate at which the net present value is zero. Now, they also ask us you know, uh, how it's determined. A project's IRR is often calculated through an iterative Trial and error process. Depends on the cash flows and how smooth they are and if they're the same every period. But we're telling them how this is going to be calculated. Now, kind of building on this, requirement number six, explain how IRR is used in project appraisal and approval. Very simple. The IRR is a measure of the interest rate returned on the capital invested in the project over the life of the project. This discounted cash flow method takes into account both the magnitude and time of the expected cash flows over the life of the project. Here's our kind of the main part. The internal rate of return is used in project appraisal and approval by comparing the project's IRR to the firm's hurdle rate to determine whether or not the project is a productive use of capital. Projects with an IRR lower than the hurdle rate are rejected and projects with an IRR equal to or higher than the hurdle rate are accepted. Okay, that last couple of sentences right there, that's the, the getting the points for this requirement by saying how it is used and how we make that decision as to whether or not a project is going to be beneficial. And the last requirement, compare and contrast IRR to the net present value method of evaluating capital expenditure. Now, we're going to want to say it a little more nicely than this, but really what we're looking at here is IRR gives us a percentage and that present value gives us a dollar amount. Okay, one's a percentage, one's a dollar amount. So 
Net present value discounts each future cash flow at the hurdle rate and compares the discounted future cash flows to the initial cost. Net present value has an advantage in that it shows the right there, dollar amount of additional value the project is expected to produce for the company's owners. IRR gives a percentage result, which can be readily compared to other uses, such as investing in securities or what that hurdle rate is so we can make a decision about whether or not to invest in this project. So good question here, talking about the different cash flows and being able to recognize what cash flows are relevant and what cash flows are not relevant. We had one that was a sunk cost. Again, a lot of requirements here, but again, step by step, you go through them one at a time, you answer them, don't panic when one of them doesn't jump right out at you. There's a lot of opportunities for points in a question that has so many requirements. And the good news is we're prepared for all of these requirements. So not only are there a lot of opportunities for points, we're actually going to take them up on those opportunities. We're going to get points for all of these different requirements that they've asked. And when they put it all together, we will absolutely have passed a question like this just by going step by step and answering what it is that they ask for. Prepared for capital budgeting, we know how to pre calculate and use all of those different cash flows. We know the internal rate of return, we know the net present value, and that's going to make certain that we pass with a very nice score, we pass this individual question.